how come that sleep isn't a hormesis stressor like fasting or exercise? Well, it's an it's anti hormesis. Um, it's it's necessary for for long life and health. There's no question about that. Um, you mean a lack of sleep? Why doesn't yeah, that work? Yeah, yeah. Why can't you? Because you're saying fast. It's uncomfortable. It makes you feel. It, it makes you live longer. We're in scary mode. We need to extend our life, or else we might not be able to reproduce before we die. So, knuckle down. Yeah. And the same thing goes for exercise. You're under stress. Why not just? Why why isn't sleep or a lack of sleep have the same impact? That's a really, 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 really good question. No one's ever asked me that. But the answer is that the <laughs> longevity the longevity gene that we study. That's really we think it's really important for uh, for human longevity too. Is part of the the circadian clock, and when you mess that up, either through lack of sleep, jet lag, or just aging, which diminishes the clock's ability to form high peaks and low peaks, um, then it 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 impacts your longevity probably because it's affecting uh, your ability to fight disease through longevity defenses, but it's a it seems to be a positive feedback problem, which is that if you don't get enough sleep, you screw up your aging, and then you age, and aging screws up your sleep. And by the time you're elderly, you're not sleeping well, uh, and uh, you, you probably you're you're under this accelerated aging program. Um, interestingly, that I talk a lot about NAD, which is part of my research, controls this CERT one defense system, and the levels go down as you age, but they also go up and down during the day. As you're waking up, you start to make more NAD. And if you disrupt that NAD level, you disrupt your sleep. And so that's why I tell people if they're going to boost their NAD levels, do it coincident with the clock as it's rising. Hit it then, which is in the morning. Because I know from experience that if you take it late at night, you're going to bump up your body, make it think that it's the morning, uh, and you'll, you'll have trouble sleeping. It'd be like taking melatonin to wake up and cortisol before bed. It's just not in line with the natural circadian rhythm. Right. But I find, and this is just anecdotal, uh, I find it's very good raising NAD levels uh, when you get to a destination in a different time zone, which makes sense, right? That that you're able to control the body's clock and reset it. What if it's 10 p.m. at night? Uh, where in my destination? Yeah, then, then I'll... I'll I'll fast until the next morning and then take a hit of uh, NAD booster in the morning. God. And then I feel great. I don't I don't have jet lag anymore. You've managed to fix that problem? Yeah, for myself, for sure. There's been some research into melatonin recently, hasn't there, around longevity, or at least I keep on seeing it popping up here and there. Have you looked into that at all? Oh, well, I read the literature. It's hard to keep up uh, with all of it, but I don't think um, I've seen anything amazing about melatonin in years. And when you start to see a big gap in discoveries in science, you start to wonder, is it really reproducible or not? But if, if there's something new, I'll definitely send it my way and I'll report about it in public. I'll have a look. Um, so sleep for longevity, does anyone now, I mean, I, I can't believe that anybody in this world, after Matthew Walker just and red-pilled everyone on the planet with his book, I can't believe that anyone doesn't really value it. How often... Do you think, uh, how often do you in, encounter people that don't understand the the price they pay for poor sleep? Uh, not not very often. I think I've got his book on the shelf up there. Yeah, there it is yeah. next to my rocket ship. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, it's much more, I mean, thanks to, to the book, Matt's book, it, it really is in public's consciousness. Now, I, I don't talk to everybody and I tend to talk to people who approach me and they're, they're interested. Already in down the rabbit hole, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's it's night and day, excuse the pun, um, <laughs> in the public's eye, uh, the value of sleep. Uh, but I find that some people get stressed out about not sleeping, which makes things worse. So you have to be careful not to worry too much. What I did was I, I, I have one of these aura rings, which <clears> tells <throat> when I've had a bad night's sleep. And that's not so much to tell me that I need to take it easy. I mean, I can tell everyone knows when they feel crappy. But it's more about reflecting on what happened the night before and what might have caused it. Maybe a big meal, too much alcohol, that kind of stuff. I had a uh, author on the show talking about some of the challenges of tech addiction and wearables addiction is now mm-hmm. uh, another thing where he was talking about um, people who have to hit their 10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000 steps a day 
and the husband thought that this particular woman was having an affair because she'd always leave the house at 10 p.m. at night. And it turned out that she was seven and a half thousand steps under her. So she's there power walking around the neighborhood and mm -hmm. her husband thinks that she's off having sex with the neighbor or something like that. Very, very briskly walking to have a, a quick fling that lasts for about seven minutes and then coming back. Uh, <laughs> well, the, the, it does become addictive, but it's better to be addicted to that than a lot of other things. Uh, I think that the future is that we will know way more about our bodies than than we know about our cars. Right now, it's the opposite. I mean, who, who would drive without a dashboard? But how many of us have tracked our bodies over the last 10 years like I have? And what's coming in the, the very near future, and I already am in this future, it's just, you know, I'm one of the, on the you know, front row seat. Um, you'll have a ring, you have a watch, but more importantly, your doctor will give you a patch to stick here, either just before the visit, maybe a week before, or if you just left hospital. And then eventually, you wouldn't leave home without one because you'll, you'll need it. These devices are, instead of going for an annual checkup, they'll measure you a thousand times a second. Um, and they're real. They exist. I've got one just in my in my bag. I usually wear it. You push a button. It syncs with your phone. Your doctor can see the results. Um, and they'll tell you if you get sick, if you're going to have a heart attack in the future next week. Um, they monitor your breathing, your temperature, your heart. And it's uh, in the U.S. FDA approved. So these are true medical devices, not not toys like these things. <laughs> Didn't you say it can work out which side you slept on, whether you slept on your right or your left last night and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're seeing a lot. They're, you've got to give up some privacy. I was going to say, yeah. This, dude, one of the best things that I've heard you say was someone can steal your credit card once, but once your health records are public, that's for life. That is going to be health record security is going to be a huge thing. As you get all of these crazy insights and you're potentially able to look at the project out someone's someone's life, that's implications for employment, for relationships, for insurance, for everything it is but we already live in that world we shouldn't be scared of it now we're talking about gaining an extra 10 probably 20 years for some of us with this technology you have to take you know take technology for what it is and already our medical records are digitized and can be stolen but they're not so there are really robust mechanisms in place and laws right now about health uh, data security and we'll strengthen them but right now, I'm, I'm not concerned. I think the, the benefits far outweigh the risk. And I, I haven't seen anybody's genome get hacked or stolen <laughs> yet. Um, I, am, I am building a company uh, that, that will tell you your biological age and, and ostensibly how to slow down the process and reverse it with all the latest technology. Um, and I've, I've got a website if anybody wants to sign up. And Chris, we can do you Amazing. as one of the early adopters. Um, What's the website? The website, we, the website is drsinclair.com. Doctor is spelled out, not D-R, D-O-C-T-O-R, Sinclair.com. Get on the wait list and uh, you'll be one of the first people on the planet to have this test done. Um, and uh, I'm sure we'll offer some discounts early for, for early adopters too. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. It makes me very happy indeed. Peace.